Hey guys, this is the first video in the chord theory series where we are going to look at how to build chords in any key on the guitar fretboard. Now, you can find all sorts of videos on how to play chords up and down the fretboard, how to strum the strings, and where to place your fingers to actually make the sounds in a very mechanical way so you can ultimately play other people's stuff because you don't know why you're playing those chords. That's different than what we're gonna do here. We're gonna focus on specifically why you're using certain notes and the logic behind the intervals that you're using to actually create these harmonies and then string these chords together into logical progressions that create beautiful songs. That's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna really look at what's going on here. Now, when I first started the guitar, I had no idea. I thought that certain chords just sounded good because over time, musicians eventually discovered that certain notes sounded good together. Just like in the world of food, uh, certain people notice that if you take a peanut and crush it and make it peanut butter, and you take a raspberry and crush it to make raspberry jam, you put that together, you have peanut butter and jelly. And it, it tastes good even though peanuts and raspberries grow in very different places in very different ways. Ultimately, the result was just this kind of random lucky chance that they, they sound good together. I thought the same thing happened in music where you have certain notes and you just kind of put them together and voila, something cool results from that. That's not really how it works. There's actually a logic to the way that chords are built in a key and we're going to look at that. Now, our secret weapon here is we're not just going to use the traditional symbols that musicians use like letters and numbers to describe these patterns of notes and intervals. We're gonna use color to really visualize these patterns. And when we do this, we're gonna find that it provides some really special insight into what we're doing. Because the term music theory literally means the act of contemplating music. And the word theory comes from the Greek theoria, which means to look at, view, speculate, or see. And by using color, a special pattern of colors that mirrors the actual patterns of music, we can truly practice the art and science of music theory by literally looking at the patterns that result. Now in the Guitar Keys series, we saw how these colors reveal the inherent geometry of music. And really there are six basic symmetrical patterns in music that you can see on the fretboard. Six patterns of intervals that revolve around interval one or the tonic in a given key that form certain paths and patterns that can help you navigate the fretboard. It's beautiful. And within this symmetry of geometric patterns, one pattern in particular stands out in any key, which is the major scale pattern. In the key of C, for example, this pattern is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Or said using scale degrees, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. Now this major scale pattern isn't exactly symmetrical itself in that the intervals aren't all evenly spaced around the tonic interval one. So some of the notes in the chromatic scale, some of the intervals are used while some aren't, which creates a kind of lopsided symmetry you could say in this pattern. Now I go into more detail about this in another video, but the reason this major scale sounds so good, the reason intervals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one sounds so good is because the major scale is really just a subset of the chromatic scale, the 12 fundamental notes of music. And since the chromatic scale itself is a rearrangement of the circle of fifths, a special pattern in music that explains the fundamental connections between different notes, when we look at how this pattern appears in these different formations, you can see that the major scale is really just a rearranged segment of a circle of fifths sequence. In the circle of fifths, if we highlight seven of the notes that are all adjacent to each other, all neighbors in this pattern, and then rearrange this pattern so that all 12 notes form the chromatic scale sequence, what you get is a major scale, where some of the notes are played, highlighted here, and others aren't, those that are faded. And this is why the major scale sounds so good, because it's really sort of an homage to the circle of fifths. This subset of notes or intervals is especially connected. There are stronger affinities between these certain notes. So in the circle of fifths, all of these notes are musically close and they're physically close as well. But when you rotate this pattern into the chromatic scale, these notes that are musically close become physically distant, resulting in the pattern of whole step and half steps that make up the major scale. 
but even though these intervals are now scattered within the chromatic scale pattern, you can still hear the affinities and see the affinities between them. They're a compatible subset of notes and intervals. And still using the key of C as an example here, when you plot these colors on the fretboard, since each string is its own chromatic scale, highlighting only those notes within the C major scale, this pattern forms a kind of heat map on the guitar. And by that I mean a heat map in the sense that it guides your fingers up and down the fretboard to play all of the notes that sound especially good together, these notes within the C major scale. Like in this position, starting on the 5th string 3rd fret, or up one octave, starting on the 3rd string 5th fret, or starting on the 6th string 8th fret, or in various other positions up and down the fretboard. Now using color, we can see what we otherwise would not be able to see so easily. So instead of relying on letter names to describe the notes, or numbers to describe the scale degrees, or black dots like a lot of people use in music notation, or just random finger numbers in tab, we're gonna cut through all of that clutter using color to really visualize clearly these patterns that are at play. Now like I say, these patterns form geometric sequences up and down the fretboard that are symmetrical in a given key around the tonic interval one. But then looking at the major scale, they also form a kind of lopsided symmetry. And this major scale pattern, because of the compatibility between the notes uh, due to their relationship in the circle of fifths, they form a really pleasing sequence that we can use to navigate the fretboard. But it's more than just a heat map. The major scale is more than just a heat map or a compass to make our way on the instrument. It's actually also the basis of most songs we hear today. So a lot of melodies that you hear in music are just rearrangements of the major scale, taking some notes of the major scale and jumping between them in different patterns and different sequences to create something that, because it's based on the major scale, which is already so pleasing, that melody then sounds nice itself. Now, what's really cool is that while the major scale is a compatible subset of notes or intervals in the chromatic scale, the major scale is also the source of other things like chords in music. And chords themselves are just subsets of the major scale. And by that, what I mean is that we can take some notes from the major scale and combine them together to create nice harmonies that are actually really simple to build by playing every other note in the major scale. So to play a C major chord, for example, you start on interval one, C, skip interval two, D, to play interval three, E, skip four, F, to play five, G, and combined these three notes, C1, E3, and G5 are a nice sounding chord, C major. Likewise, when we start on scale degree two, D, when we skip interval three, E, we play four, F, skip five, G, and play six, A, and the result is the D minor chord, D, F, and A. Then starting on scale degree three, E, we play every other note in this pattern to create the E minor chord, E, G, and B, or intervals three, five, and seven. The F major chord starts on scale degree four, F, and includes notes F, A, and C, or scale degrees four, six, and one. G major is built using the same pattern, the same logic, starting on scale degree five in the key of C with notes G, B, and D. Then A minor starts on scale degree six, playing every other note, A, C, and E, or intervals six, one, and three. And then the last chord starts on scale degree seven. B in the key of C with notes B, D, and F. And this chord is called a diminished chord. Really, that's it. Each chord is built by playing every other note from the major scale. And that's really at the heart of it, how chords are built, how the basic triads of any key are constructed. They're using subsets of the major scale. So while the major scale and melodies that stem from the major scale are sequences of notes played one at a time sequen in sequence, so one note, then one note, then one note, you have a melody like that. Chords 
are notes played simultaneously at the same time. And while you can come up with any sort of melody from the major scale by coming up with different orders, different rearrangements of those notes in almost innumerable permutations, the chords in a key follow more of a logic, more of a structure. And it's really simple, and once you understand how it works, you can really build any chord you want. So thanks for joining me in this video, which is really just an introduction to the fact that chords are built in a very logical and ordered way. And in the next video, we're going to look at the secret sauce of harmony, using intervals called tertian intervals. Tertian means of a major third or minor third. That's really the basis of how chords are built in music, and we're going to use that that understanding to create some awesome stuff. So let's geek out together, shall we? And I'll see you in the next video.